Hi guys, welcome back to this week's Stats Chat. As you can see, not quite so relaxed this week. Sorry, Dakota. Um, because today we're talking about, crazily enough, statistics. Um, we'll start by just going straight on in and looking at the faction power rankings for the week. And that will lead us into a few different discussions because uh, there is quite a bit of movement there and it leads on to quite a few interesting points um, and some things that other people have been talking about and kind of makes me aware of some of the small misconceptions about the site. So I thought maybe uh, today would be a good time to uh, try and tackle that, even though it was only a couple of weeks ago that I talked about what exactly an ELO system was. Um, so if you're looking for more like how the calculations are worked out, then go back two weeks um, to Stats Chat 9. Um, and if uh, and we'll try not to cover the same kind of ground. We're more talking about um, why what the overall impression of the site tries to achieve. So the main thing I want to tackle today, um, or the first thing at least, is um, that we've seen a decent amount of movement on the ranking system, on the factional rankings. Now, the main thing that has happened and is something that I was relatively sure would happen and is mostly an effect of the first Builder League is that we've seen the entire factional rankings table um, kind of compress. What I mean by that is we've seen the highest rated faction lose ranking points and the lowest rated faction gain in ranking points. The overall distance between faction number one and faction number seven is significantly lower than it was two weeks ago. At the moment, we see Starks at a 63 plus, and Targaryens have managed to recover to only a minus 48. That means that our gap there is only like 110, whereas it was just two weeks ago, our gap was about 170. That's a very significant reduction in what is considered the chances of a Targaryen player beating a Stark player. Why has this happened? Well, I would mostly uh, attribute it to the first Builder League. Um, obviously, the first Builder League is now moving into its third week, so we've seen two full weeks of it happen. Um, that's a decent amount of the submissions to the site over the past couple of weeks. Not the only thing running, of course, um, but possibly in the last week, it was about the only thing running because quite a few of the big events um, stopped. Um, but it is quite different to anything that's run before through the site. So we're starting to see the impact it has now as it's become uh, one of the more dominant reasons to submit results over the past couple of weeks. Now, the first Builder League, if you're not aware, has randomly assigned factions and commanders to each of the players playing in the tournament. What we therefore get is we get players playing both with commanders that might not be considered the best commander to pick for any given faction. And even more importantly, in my opinion, you get players playing with factions that they're not used to playing with. What this has an effect on, in my opinion, is that a game becomes far less predictable of what its outcome will be. Because most players and their ranking is rated upon um, the faction that they play the most, the faction that they're most comfortable with. And the faction itself, its ranking is generally dependent upon players who are comfortable with that faction always using it. So as soon as we start to um, make players effectively worse by they are significantly less experienced with the faction that they're playing with, they are far more likely to make mistakes. They are far less likely to be fielding the absolute um, best army list that can be fielded for that faction. And they're less likely to be playing it perfectly in any given game. That makes the outcome of the game much less predictable, much more, shall we say, it tends towards a 50% coin flip as opposed to it being a really known outcome because uh, we're much more reliant on player skill now. We're much more reliant on whether or not this person knows their faction well. And as these games become closer to 50-50 wins, rather than a single faction always dominating, always being predicted to win every game because they're better and they're played better, 
um, all the faction uh, rankings compress because they all push towards back towards a zero rating. They all want to be at zero if they're winning 50% of the time. So that's like the obvious answer. Um, the more in-depth answer could also be um, that we see the best players gravitate towards the best factions. And as we force some of the best players to play with the really bad factions, they prove that those factions can be like top tier as well. They can be still played in very, very powerful ways. And the players who just play the faction that they like the most and they don't like care for how powerful it is um, are now being given these factions that other people think are incredibly powerful say you know you've been given Starks they can run this 10 activation direwolf spam list but you're like well I'm not interested in that because I don't care about that being the most powerful list I want to play um, something more interesting to me I want to play um, a Tully list I want to play a great John Umber list full of Ber uh, Umber Berserkers I don't care at all about any of the stock attachments uh, I'm not going to put any of the dogs in then you get players playing what is recorded to be the most powerful faction when played in a certain way but they're playing it in a weaker manner and therefore it will drop in its power level so by both forcing players to play certain factions we get the range a bigger range of kind of what attracts people to factions and that will cause a bigger mix in the um, kind of variability and that variance pushes us towards zero and also just as we push players to play factions that they're not used to we kind of get more mistakes and games are less determined by the pure value of a faction and more by um, kind of random what could be considered randomness that is entirely predictable from the way the first builder league works that sort of brings us on to our second point which is the other thing that's happening in the rankings right now is that night's watch are in absolute freefall you know night's watch have had a terrible two weeks they are they're currently in sixth and as of right now they are within striking distance of becoming seventh this uh, this is particularly, obviously, um, worth discussing and it should be discussed. So, the Night's Watch are in freefall. Why are the Night's Watch in freefall? Because recent data says that they're losing a lot. And really, they are losing a lot. In the past week, they have a 30% win ratio. In the past month, they've only won 40%. They are the worst faction right now. That means that they're tending away from the middle down to the bottom. You have to ask yourself... Why is that true? It could be said that they are very badly affected by having to use neutral commanders in the first Builder League. That's an answer. But actually, I would dispute that because even though there's very few submissions for them, their second, third, and fourth most powerful commanders, all with positive ratings, so greater than 50% win rates in general, are all neutral commanders. So it's not the neutrals that are destroying them you could say well they're just worse when played by a person who's inexperienced with them than any other faction that could be true but actually most people believe that night's watch are one of the easiest factions to pick up and play but i would argue that actually night's watch have a big trap which is they have a tendency towards playing a very low activation count when you first start writing army lists for this faction you are naturally just drawn to write a four combat list kind of um four unit drop on the board with only three ncus a seven kind of activation thing and that you will be surprised at the fact that that isn't as good as you think it is we come to what is the solution if you want to use the site well what does that mean when you look at that faction rank ranking if you believe that the faction ranking is wrong if you believe for example that knight's watch are better than the sixth most powerful faction that they're better than the minus 40 something that they have right now you should basically 
test your own hypothesis. What you should say here is, I believe they're better than that, therefore I will play them. You could either play against them or you could play with them. You believe that they're better than um, their ranking suggests. So really your information says that you should play with them. You think they're better than that and that you could gain ranking points by using this low ranked faction. One of two things should be the outcome of that. Either you find your hypothesis is true, they are better than that, and you start to win games with them, and their ranking will recover. They will be more representative of how powerful you think that they are. They will be more correctly and balanced uh, ranked. And that's great for the site, because the site wants to represent the factions well. It doesn't want to represent, it doesn't have an agenda in any way. It doesn't want to prove that this is strong and this is weak. All it reflects is, is this is what we think the state of the game is. So if it better represents what people think the state of the game is, then that's important. Or the other thing that could happen is, is that you think they're strong, but you lose. And that should make you rethink your own hypothesis that this faction's really strong. What will actually probably happen a lot of the time is a third option, which shouldn't happen, which is that people will blame these other individual factors for why they lost. They will say, oh, I got unlucky. Oh, it happened to be a really bad matchup or something like that. But across the averaging of all these results, all these people are saying, oh, I, oh, I just got unlucky though, but I just got unlucky. But that thing falls away. And all we're left with is the raw ability of the faction. And it might be true. You really should ask yourself, if it's not winning, is it true? And if it's not true, then it will bounce back really fast. If you think that Night's Watch are underrated, the solution is to play as them. If you think that something's overrated, you think, like, Starks aren't that good, I can beat Starks, then challenge someone who plays Starks, and you will find that you either win or you lose. Your hypothesis is either proved or you should question your hypothesis. Um, you know, I kind of give those as the two options. Things can happen. You know, it's not necessarily proof or disproof, but when enough people do it, the faction will move. Obviously, it sounds like the solution is submit more data, but the point is, is if it if the site is challenging you, challenging your perceptions of the game, then go out and test them and submit the data. It's very, very important that you do submit the data because if you don't, then it continues to represent something that you don't see in your local area. And if you can change it, then that's better. And if it doesn't change, then it represents either that your local situation is different to everybody else's, or maybe your perception is wrong, and that's the learning side of the site, and that's the thing that we're moving towards now. The site should teach people new things about the game, make them challenge the perception that they have, which is their small little bubble of people that they play in. Lots of people's perceptions have been challenged by the uh, international TTS events because tons of people have been made aware of metas that exist elsewhere rather than their own enclosed gaming group. Lots of people, you know, lots of people I think will have been disappointed by the fact that they are the best player in their local area and they assumed that they were really, really brilliant at the game. And then they've gone out and played internationally on TTS and found that there are tons of people out there who are just as good as them or better. They are not actually as good as they thought they were. They are very good in their region, but their region isn't as strong as they assumed it was. And others might have thought that actually they lose all the time. They could can work inverse. Some people might think, oh, I'm not that good. I always lose to this guy. I, I always lose to Ariakas. Why 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 can't am I no good at this game? And then it turns out that Ariakas is practically one of the best players in the whole world. And you're like, oh. Maybe I'm, I'm actually quite good at this. I just happen to play against one of the people who's amazing. So, um, you know, bringing people's perspective of the game into line with what is actually true is what its intention is. So um, keep submitting. If you think that something is not, um, is more powerful than the site says it is, 
then use it. If you think that something is weak, then play against it. If you think that a player is overrated, then challenge them to a game. This is the only way these things solve themselves. If you want to find out if you're actually any good, then go out and challenge the best players on the TTS rankings rather than going and beating the people that you always beat all the time. Because that's how we find out who is actually really, really good. Um, and don't put so much don't put so much faith into the things you remember because our memories lie to us. We remember single events far more than they actually have impact on things. Single games, single dice rolls, single charges. You know, we remember these things more often than the average really says that their impact is. So all I'd say is uh, keep playing. Play if you can in play in person. Play in person, you know. There's also a conception that the site is very um, pro-TTS, shall we say. Um, actually, I'm personally not that into TTS. I, I run ran some tournaments through TTS because they're the only ones I could do in, during lockdown. But I actually massively, massively, massively favor playing tabletop. So play tabletop games, um, submit your tabletop results, see how much the tabletop rankings can progress, see where the faction rankings are at, and uh, and come back next week and uh, check out the tourney ground, check out the um, check out our commander spotlight, and come back for the next week's stat chat, um, where if you're lucky, Dakota, eventually one week, I will try and wear a smoking jacket just for you. So, see you soon.